I hope everyone's doing well. I am Mr. Ish. Thank you for joining me. For this video, we're looking here at this definite integral. How can we integrate this? 0 to 1 sin x over x dx. The traditional techniques, u substitution, trigonometric substitution, that will fail because you can't really work this through. You don't want to worry about approximate integration because we have some better technique available than that. And our technique here is to utilize the Maclaurin series to open up that sin x into a function and then we can work with it. You know when you're looking here at the Maclaurin series, we have a specific function. It can be expanded into a power series style of format and that format would look something like this. From n equals 0 up to infinity, we're looking here at a certain sum. You would have a certain nth order derivative with a 0 coming in divided by a factorial and then x to the power of n. This is what we would have. You would expand it out from n equals 0 up to infinity. It would develop a series. If you were to start expanding this out, how would it work? You would put n equals 0 in those areas. You would have as your first term right here. Then your next term would be obviously x divided by 1 factorial. Then your next term would be over here. You'll have x squared divided by 2 factorial. Then you'd have f with the zero coming in, then you'd have x to the power of 3 divided by 3 factorial, on and on and on. So that's the technique we would utilize. For clarity purposes, when we're looking right over here at this, then you're worrying about the nth order derivatives. Here's our zero order, order derivative. Here's our first order derivative. Here's our second order derivative. Here's our third order derivative, and we take it onwards. Anyhow, let's look here at the sign. You know, when you're looking at the sign, the zero order derivative is your original function. The first order derivative is cosine, the second order derivative is going to be a minus sign, and then the third order derivative will be a minus cosine, and the fourth order derivative shuffles it back to the original, which will be a sign. Let's bring everything here and develop the series for sine x. When I start plugging in these items, what do I have? I have over here a sign as my first item with a zero coming in, my zero order derivative, because these are always sine x, as you see x over here. When we come down over here, what do we have? We'll have now cosine 0 coming in here, then we'll have x divided by 1 factorial. Then when we come over here, the second order derivative, I have a minus sign over here with a 0 coming in it, x squared over 2 factorial, which is a 2. Then when I come over here, what do I have? I'm looking here at a minus cosine. That's what I have. Minus cosine with a 0 in it and then x cubed over 3 factorial, which is 6. Then we can just bring one more item right here. We'll have here a sign with a 0 coming in it, x to the 4 and over 24. I'll bring out the answer for you right over here in this top part. Sine of 0 goes away. Cosine of 0, 1 times x, I have a x. Then let's look over here, sine of 0 is a 0, this goes away, then let's come over here. Cosine of 0 is a 1 with this minus becomes a minus, minus x cubed over 6. Or you can say 3 factorial, but I'll keep it as is. Then this is a 0. Then I would have, if you were to continue this on, you'd have an x to the 5 over a 5 factorial, which would be a 20, 120. Then here you'd have here a minus x to the 7 over 7 factorial. For the purposes of consistency, let's bring in these factorials. This right here is my sine series developing as you can see it. Now what we do is we bring that series into our integral. Our integral becomes what? You're looking here from 0 to 1. I have an x. I'm going to write that as 1 over x. Then I have the sine, which is this, x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the 5 over 5 factorial minus x to the 7 over 7 factorial, on and on, and dx. Simplify this x, denominator x, with the numerator x's. When you do it, you'll have over here 1 minus, you'll have a x squared over 3 factorial, which I'll write as 6. Then I'll have here x to the 4 over x over 120, then I'll have a minus x to the 6 over 5040, and we'll just hold it right there and dx. Now we have to integrate this using basic polynomial integration, and it's easy. From this one, I'm going to get here an x as my antiderivative. From here, I'll get here a minus x cubed over 3, 3 times 6 is an 18. From here, I'll get a plus x to the 5 over 5 times 120, let's bring that in, 600. Then I have here minus x to the 7 over 5040 0, 0 times 7. Some of these numbers will be irrelevant momentarily, which will be 35,000 
280 and we're looking at this from 1 and 0. We are in essence looking at 1 minus 1 or 18 plus 1 or 600 minus 1 or 35,280. The 0 is meaningless. Let's compute that on our calculator and it'll give us a good estimate. I have 1 minus 1 divided by 18 plus 1 over 600 minus 1 divided by 35,280 and what do we have? 0.946. Our answer here going to be 0.946 and we can hold it there and it should be good. Look here at the calculator. I have a 0.9468. Maybe I don't want to ignore those digits. So let's rewrite this and publish those remaining two digits for better accuracy. I have over here 0 0.94608. Looking back here at my calculator screen, if I look at after 8, I have a 2, 7, and I'll round that up to 3. Right here, and this here would be the answer for this definite integral, 0 0.946083. Of course, there'll be a little bit of a margin of error, but it should be very small. So that should be it for this video. Thank you for watching.